So a practical that you can carry out is to do with uh, stationary waves on a string. And this is a nice setup and when you get that wave kind of form really nicely, it is, it is quite nice to see. Now some of the theory that you need is that C stands for the wave speed. Uh, and also you, you should remember that C is equal to F lambda. So the wave speed is equal to the frequency times the wavelength. What we're also going to be looking at is this kind of uh, first harmonic here, where we have our fundamental frequency, which is F naught. Now something else that uh, you might not be so familiar with is that uh, we can also say that C is equal to the square root of T over M, where T is the tension in newtons, which is provided by uh, the mass that we have over here. And M is the mass per unit length of the string. And it's quite easy to find the mass per unit length. All you need, for example, is a metre of string, and then you just uh, put it on a mass balance, and then you'll work out your mass per unit length in kilograms per metre. So what equipment do you need? Well, the equipment that you need is kind of shown very roughly in this diagram. First of all, over here we have a retort stand. Uh, and to stop this kind of toppling over, if this is under tension, it's often a good idea to maybe kind of put like a big heavy mass on one side, or maybe use a G-clamp to actually attach it to the bench, which is this thing along here. Going away from that, we have a string. Now, the string should be tied onto the retort stand, and then it gets passed through a very small hole in the middle of this thing here. Now, this thing here, is your vibration generator. And your vibration generator, basically, it moves up and down. And this is then attached uh, by a couple of wires to your signal generator. And by controlling this, we can make this move up and down. And that then causes the string to go up and down as well. Now, this string here, um, what we do, we put it over a bridge, which is just basically a block of wood with a kind of look at a V shape at the top. And this just allows us a definite end point at which to take our measurements. And what we can do is we can measure the length uh, from here to here, so from the vibration generator to where the bridge is. So that's the, the length of uh, the kind of stationary wave that we're, we're kind of considering. This then runs over a pulley over the edge of the bench uh, down to our mass down here. Uh, and this mass here, we can change the mass to therefore vary the tension in this string. So that's pretty much all that you need to, to actually kind of set up this experiment. But what measurements do you need to take uh, and how can you kind of get some useful data from that? So one thing that you can investigate with a stationary wave is how the length affects uh, that uh, first fundamental frequency. And what we can do is we can vary the length just by moving that bridge up and down the equipment of that string. So we measure the length in metres. We then work out what the frequency is by actually reading off the signal generator. And again, you should remember that we measure frequency in hertz. Uh, and then we can do uh, some stuff with the equations that we saw in that uh, last part of the video. So what do we know? We know that the wave speed C is equal to F lambda. Okay. But we also know that the frequency F is equal to 1 over the time period. Now, something else that we need, we maybe sort of, uh, you should be able to remember about your work on these stationary waves is that when you have this kind of fundamental frequency, the length of that string is going to be equal to lambda over 2. The reason being that each end is fixed and therefore a node, and the distance from a node to another node is equal to half a wavelength. So this means that length that we've measured that you can do uh, using a meter ruler is equal to your wavelength over 2, which therefore means that your wavelength is equal to 2 lambda. Now if I take this value of lambda and I substitute it back into that equation, we can say that the wave speed is equal to 2 times f times l. And if we know that f is equal to 1 over t, we can also say then that the wave speed is equal to 2l over t. So l is what we're varying here, and you can go from a value of maybe 1 metre down to maybe half a metre. You can measure your values of the fundamental frequency uh, and therefore the time period uh, which is going to be in seconds. So you can have various values for L down here and various values for T. What you can then do is plot this onto a graph. Now what you should find is that when you actually plot your data, you should get a straight line going through the origin. And what you can then do is calculate the gradient. And you've got to remember that the gradient uh, is going to be equal to effectively L divided by T. So it's L over T. And if you think about uh, this equation over here, we know that the wave speed is equal to, to more, is equal to two times l over t, so that means uh, c is going to be equal to two times your gradient. 
And that should then, if you've done this uh, kind of nicely, that should then give you um, the value or one value for the wave speed along that string. Now, as a final part to this investigation, you can also maybe look at the tension uh, in that string provided by the mass on the end and also uh, the mass per unit length of that string. And what you should uh, remember is that um, C is going to be equal to the square root of T over M. And that means, uh, provided that you maybe take a reading for the tension, you take a reading for the mass per unit length uh, for a certain uh, length of string, you should find that uh, if you put these numbers back into the equation, this should then give you uh, the same value for the wave speed that you found when you used the gradient in your graph in that last part of the investigation. So I hope that helps just give a, a flavour to the experiment. And remember, there are some safety aspects you need to think about. Perhaps you need to make sure that you stand away from the mass in case it falls onto the floor. But apart from that, it's a pretty straightforward, safe experiment. If you have any comments, if you have any questions, or if you've been doing this recently and you've got any tips, please just leave them in the comments below this video. Uh, and good luck with the rest of your practicals. Thank you.